Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and in today's episode we are talking about Expo 2020 and building and creating the future of the smart city. I'm really happy and excited to talk about this topic and overly excited to be joined today by Oliver Kraft, the Executive Vice President of Expo 2020 for Siemens. Oliver, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, my pleasure. It's, it's an absolute pleasure and I'm excited to talk about Expo 2020. I can't imagine how excited you and your team are after such a journey to get to where we are today. How does it feel to be on the ground and up and running and seeing visitors in this amazing scope that is Expo 2020 at the moment? Well, you know what? Um, I'm super excited, but I'm also, also happy and I'm very, very proud of our achievements, um, especially what the team achieved so far. I can only imagine because it's been quite a journey and and I, you know there's been such a scope and such an impact of, of the you know what's been going on around the globe at the moment since March of 2020. So it's been such a challenge and the fact that you're there now and that you're seeing visitors is such an exciting scope for us. So we're going to dive in and talk a little bit about what Expo's about. But before we do that, um, I'd like to understand a little bit about what you do because you know, you have a huge team there. There's a lot of stuff that's happened over the, the, the last years to get us to where we are today. How would you explain your role in, in this whole process? Um, John, I have two versions for you. Uh, one is the, the short version, and then I will add a few more words. In, in short, I would say my role is about supporting Team Siemens, okay, which is a cross-business team uh, in our public-private partnership with Expo 20 Training. And it's about creating a blueprint for future smart cities based on smart infrastructure, technology, and the Internet of Things. Now, adding to that, it means that um, I have a team uh, which is uh, in charge of about 10 work streams. Uh, and that comprises, of course, the different technology elements, but also topics like real estate. And I can explain that later. Uh, um, legal. And, and communications. And by the way, what I learned uh, on my journey with Expo 2020, the power of communication, that's, I learned very, very much. I love to hear it. And, you know, this is another chance for us to do some of this because, you know, right now in this episode, we're talking to, to people all across the world who are interested to understand a little bit more about what we've achieved because, as you talked about there, we, we we hear about the blueprint of this future smart city, and, and that's in the background behind Expo. So, so give us a little bit of an overview, because Expo is not just about beautiful pavilions and, and music and food uh, and things like this. What, what is Expo about uh, overall? See, um, while it is for many the, the biggest gathering on Earth, or I'd call it also the, the biggest show uh, on Earth, like a mega event, um, for us, it's also the biggest, the, the biggest platform for dialogue and collaboration, but of course for technology innovation, for showcasing uh, technology, but platform for dialogue and collaboration for the world's greatest, let's say, innovators, for inventors, uh, for pragmatists, for idealists, um, for, of course, governmental officials, and I will uh, host a governmental delegation in one hour from now, by the way, um, but also for entrepreneurs, and eventually for you and me, friends and families, and for all those with, with high hopes uh, for the future. Now, Expo 2020 is also an ecosystem of partners, and we as Siemens, as a premier partner for infrastructure digitization, we are at the very, very heart of it, um, pretty much driving the, the creation of a blueprint for future smart cities. Beautiful. And, and I'd like to dive into this blueprint a little bit more. What do we mean when we talk about a blueprint for the future smart city? Give us a little bit more detail on that. Uh, see, Expo 2020 um, has been designed from day one to live on in legacy. That is important to keep in mind. Um, so to live on in the future, it will eventually become District 2020. Also, it has been designed to host up to 300,000 people per day. And if you now consider and expect the uh, visitor volume of up to 25 million people over a period of, let's say, six months, then Expo 2020 will not only face the challenges of a mega event, but also those of a city. Now, if you take into consideration that 80% of the investments will remain in the future, that means all of what I said before, that means nothing else that we are creating 
um, a blueprint for future smart cities, which is based on a co-created smart holistic city use case using state-of-the-art infrastructure technology and, and IoT. And we designed that uh, in order to make sure that not only visitors and operators, but also the future residents of the new District 2020 Lake, which will uh, become in place after the event phase will be over, will have a safe and secure, a comfortable and a sustainable experience. Yeah, and, and that's that's a really important part. That's something I'm really interested to talk about in a little bit is, is, is that future. Because as you said, or as you mentioned, 80% of the investment of the infrastructure of what's being created in preparation for this event will continue on into the future for decades to come. And, and that's one of the really important parts or interesting and exciting parts is it's it's not a theoretical blueprint. This is this is a real life physical uh, example of what we can achieve when we start to bring all of these different technologies uh, and this aspiration together. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the technology because uh, you know we've talked about digitalization uh, and innovation and you talked about Expo 2020 also from the event phase being a collection and a, and a platform to have this conversation with governments and innovators and technology suppliers and 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 developers. What are some of the technologies? Give us an example of of some of that digital technology and, and the, the digitalized approach that you're taking to create this smart city. Yeah, see, um, when we started our journey with, with Expo, and that was about uh, five years ago, and uh, when we eventually decided to become the premier partner for infrastructure uh, digitalization, one of the key questions for us was, what kind of technologies do we want to select or create or even co-create together with the customer in order to make that city a smart city, or then later on that district 2020 a smart district 2020. Now we also know uh, what makes a smart city smart. Um, it's uh, of course about all kinds of interconnected uh, technologies. And eventually we sat down with the customer and, and we figured out what are the key requirements for visitors, operators, but also for the future residents. And uh, these are safety and security. I kind of touched upon it already. Um, these are also uh, comfort or quality of life. And of course, sustainability, and last but not least, resilience. So I need to admit that we added uh, resilience at a later point in time when unfortunately uh, the, the pandemic kicked in. So the, the pieces of technology we are providing is, for example, the largest control pro solution, uh, which is a solution for situation awareness and physical security. Um, it's smart infrastructure uh, technology. Here we provide access to 150 operators and we connect up to 15,000 camera cameras. Another example of safety and security is that we will connect uh, up to 5,500 doors using CPAS access control. Um, then, of course, we provide all kinds of, of technologies which we believe are required um, for developing a city or a district into, into a smart city district, like for example, a central building management system for comfort and quality of life within the buildings, or even optimizing building performance using a cloud-based energy uh, platform, which is called Navigator, where we connect 130 uh, plus buildings. And last but not least, we need to have something which brings everything together like a glue, and that's the Internet of Things. And uh, in order to make that happen, we use uh, our MindSphere IoT operating system. It's an industrial solution. Where we even develop a smart city application on top of it. Yeah, perfect. Just in that very short explanation, you know, you highlighted so many different types of technologies, from physical security uh, to energy efficiency and cloud-based analytics to to this this IoT platform, this overarching management system across this 130 plus buildings. This is a huge amount of, of different technologies. This is a huge number of different different providers, different stakeholders. And you mentioned earlier this ecosystem, this collaboration. How important is collaboration and this ecosystem of partners in developing what you already have today and, and ensuring and securing the future of this of this community moving forward? If I may say, John, that is a very good question because everybody talks about technology, um, but but collab collaboration plays in, I would say, an even more important role. Or right? the the importance of collaboration increases in the in the digital age because digitalization is very much characterized by complexity, by uncertainty, and by by rapid change. 
And, and that has increased the need for collaboration significantly, which we see in the market. Uh, and especially talking about uh, our partners, we are part of a family of, of 12 premium partners. So in addition to a more, let's say, traditional customer relationship, where a supplier responds to predefined specifications, um, we see that customers are asking more and more for value-driven partnerships. And, and these partners of such partnerships, they can also include competitors. Uh, think about competition. So that means wherever it makes sense, you got to, let's say, partner with competitors, but you also compete with partners. And that is especially true for smart urban environments like districts, cities, or even um, Expo 2020. And there are many, let's say, technology solutions out there, even off the shelf. Um, but in the end, when you start the conversation with the customer, after the first hour, you realize, despite the fact that they have to have, uh, that they seem to have similar needs, like in a, in a, um, in a specific project, they have different priorities, they have different preferences, and of course, they have different budgets. And that's why you got to collaborate with the customer. And we are using co-creation, a co-creation methodology, which aims at uh, bringing people together from the customer, from Siemens, and of course, from other partners, right? In order to sit together and come up with new ideas. First, you start with use case identification and the discovery workshop, uh, and then you think about business models, so you can even go that far to design and, and define uh, operational uh, processes. So you've got to understand what is the job to be done by the customer, et cetera. And if I may add, um, Expo 2020 is a prime example uh, for how such a partnership can actually deliver results. It's a public-private partnership. And maybe that could be one solution um, Globally, these you know, public-private partnerships between cities or districts and technology companies like Siemens in order to help to transition, let's say, cities into smart cities or communities into, into smart communities. You just described uh, in, in, a, in a great amount of detail, so thanks very much, but this change, this shift in relationship almost between between customer and and partner, customer and provider, to shift the, the relationship. And, and I think, and, and maybe my next question would be, is it fair to say that as the scope grows and as we start to talk about communities and cities as a whole, this becomes more and more important because there's just no way that that one person has all the answers for every use case and, and every goal that, that a community, a government, a city has. Absolutely. Absolutely, I, I, I fully agree that, with that, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. I'd like to just touch on one one more topic because before, uh, at the start of the conversation, you talked a little bit about you know, what this, this community looks like in the future. So uh, the safety, mm -hmm. the security, the comfort, the, the well-being and, and the quality of life for the people that will be using this space um, after the event phase uh, into the future. Uh, and one of the topics that we that we touched on quickly was sustainability. And, mm -hmm. and maybe you could give us a little bit of an insight on how important sustainability is from that building perspective uh, and how important that is uh, as part of the future of, of this, this infrastructure, this future smart city. Yeah, um, good point. See, um, buildings are now to generate uh, to consume between 30 and 80 percent of the of the world's energy, and uh, in our region here in, in Dubai and in the Middle East, of course, it's more like the 80 percent, right? And any any company which can optimize building performance, for example, in terms of energy consumption or, or water consumption, has the biggest lever to drive sustainability with impact. And we as a company, uh, we do. So that's what we're also doing. Of course, at Expo, where we provide all kinds of, uh, let's say, uh, sustainable smart infrastructure technology. In addition to that, is the sustainability pavilion here. And if you ever come over, you should visit that. And we are using IoT in order to bring the sustainability pavilion to life. And uh, that what that means is uh, Expo calls it terror. And terror is a living thing. And uh, and we allow it to communicate with the visitors. How do we do that? Uh, using IoT, we collect, analyze, contextualize, and visualize data, which uh, helps us also to come up with certain indices, like, for example, an energy usage, in, usage index. And Terra 
uh, reacts to the number of people, the waste generated. The more people, the more waste will be generated and the more um, oxygen will be consumed. And then you will hear the heartbeat of Terra going up. So we have a kind of a, a screen implemented and it shows like uh, the impact of, of humans in the sustainability pavilion on uh, on Terra as a sustainability pavilion. That, that, that's quite nice. And it, uh, it's about transparency and interacting of course, with the with the visitor. Now, as I said earlier, 80% of the technology uh, will remain, and uh, uh, we are in discussions with District 2020, which is then you know the future of Expo 2020. And uh, there, of course, we pitch our IoT solutions, and we focus on 16 use cases: water quality, air quality, but also energy consumption, water consumption, which are just uh, uh, just. Uh, Mentioned. So we are for, for many. It's just like uh, the the event is the the end of the journey for us. It's just a, a gratifying milestone by creating that smart that smart city actually using sustainable infrastructure technology. Yeah, perfect. And and what I really like about that, as you said, you mentioned transparency and involving and involving the people that live and, and work in the space. And I think that's one of the core aspects that, that we as an industry are starting to recognize more and more, that, that the more information we're able to provide and the more we're able to involve the, the users, the, the community, the, the people who are members of this space, uh, the more impact that we can have. And, and, and it's uh, exciting may, to hear. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yes, Please go. If I, if I may add to that, because I'm very passionate about that topic, uh, inclusiveness, um, so thanks for, for mentioning that. Uh, see if smart infrastructure technology and especially IoT, if they're done right, um, then it will empower people. It will empower us humans. And that will allow us to uh, make smarter decisions every day because the true meaning of IoT really is, uh, if you do it right, it's about inclusivity. And it's about transparency. Uh, which allows smart decision making that will give us uh, a peace of mind. So uh, <laughs> forgive me if I uh, summarize what you just said, just using other words, but I think that's one of the very important topics. No, I, I, I very much appreciate it because that empowerment, I think, is the, the perfect way to summarize. Uh, you know, it's it's enabling people to give that information so that it's not just the technology in the background, but also the people that are involved in that decision making process, which is a huge step forward. That, you know, we couldn't have done five or ten years ago as an example. Um, thank you so much for the insight. I, I've got a, a little bit of a question around around what the legacy is because we've talked about what happens with the infrastructure mm. and the space of Expo 2020. Expo has been with us for a long time. I think the first one was was in London uh, in the, the mid 19th century uh, and this brought a lot of technologies that, that really drove innovation forward for the, the decades after that. From an Expo 2020 perspective, if you had to summarize or highlight one or two topics that you think will stick with us, what will they be after the, the event is over? Yeah, I think, um, of course, um, I, I, I'm wearing the hat as the infrastructure digitization partner, so that's what I very much care about, right? I will not talk about that. It's one of the, I can say, coolest events uh, in the world with up to 50, 60 events per day. So if you walk, for example, to the mobility pavilion, one sentence, uh, you pass by uh, some of the pavilions and you hear music and you see the crowd and people enjoying having it, uh, it themselves and having a good time. Um, now, for us as Siemens, um, our technology, you might not always see, that's why we also have the experience center here to bring digitalization to light, but we will make sure that it's going to be a safe and secure and a comfortable experience for visitors and operators. So, if you ask me to summarize it, first, um, it will be the most connected expo ever. Secondly, uh, we bring expo, which is 4.4 square kilometers, twice the size of Monaco, onto the Internet of Things. And, and third is that, as I, as I mentioned earlier, it has been designed to live on a legacy. Uh, that means everything that we're doing here um, it serves the purpose of creating that blueprint for future smart cities. That also means what we can do here, we can, we can do everywhere. And this is a tough one, so I, I apologize in advance. But 
but this is the blueprint for the future. When, when is future going to be normal for us? When will will this what we've just demonstrated and achieved, and what you've done together with the customer and, and this ecosystem of partners, what you've been able to achieve uh, in, in in preparation for this event? When will this become normal for us? Well, it's very very tough to tell you as to when, but I can tell you that every city project is evolving, so it never stops. You know. Uh, so therefore, also from a technology perspective, you got to select technologies which are which are scalable and changeable. And that is the, the beauty of IoT. If you have an IoT operating system which is scalable, you can start uh, start uh, small and then uh, go bigger over time. It allows you to prioritize and eventually allows you to put everything into a roadmap in order to transition, let's say, more analog places into, into smart places. Now, there's also... And on the more, let's say, if I if I reflect on, on me uh, personally, um, there is this quote from Mark Weiser from 1991. He was kind of the uh, one of the key influencer when it came to ubiquitous computing or like I think edge computing kind of thing. Uh, so he said that city um, will be using my own words, my understanding, my interpretation. The city will uh, be considered, or a place will be considered super smart if the technology we are using becomes indistinguishable from our everyday life. And just think about your smartphone. It's, you can't do without it anymore. And that is true also then in the future, maybe for intermodal uh, concepts, uh, transport concepts, or for intelligent traffic management systems. So people get used to it very, very easily, I would say. But that yeah, perfect. No, and, and and I think that's also a great way to to finish our discussion or to to close out because as you say, everything's always evolving. And even even Dubai 2020 or or, or the community that continues, the community of of Expo 2020 will also evolve in the future. And and as you described, the technologies there are built with that in mind to be flexible and to be changeable. So that in 20 years, when we are able to do things that we can't imagine today, uh, we'll be able to apply it and and take this community into the future many more times. Yes, absolutely. Perfect, Oliver. Thank you so much. I have one last question, and and you know this reflects a little bit back to the the opening of the conversation. You know, you are now in Expo 2020. You're live, as you say. There are there are, are millions of visitors coming past. There are events happening every day. COVID somehow still lives with us, but but how does Expo look from your perspective? How many visitors? How many? Uh, yeah, how many of our of our world citizens do you think will come through uh, the Expo 2020 event and really experience some of the cool things that you've talked about? Now, what I heard, I mean, Expo 2020 expects 25 million visits. They're off. The last number I heard was 21 million visitors. So they expect a few people, of course, uh, coming more than more than once. And what I've been told is that in the first week alone, they already sold 400,000 tickets. Or actually, they said 400,000 visitors. They hosted 400,000 uh, 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 visitors. And um, the UAE, I would say, is a prime example how to deal with the with the um, pandemic. And and let's not forget, I mean, COVID did let's say disrupt our our sense of safety. And security in public places, in in warehouses, but also in buildings. And here comes Siemens, our company, and and you probably realize I'm very proud that uh, that I'm with Siemens into the into the play because we create environments which care, and that means with smart infrastructure technology and IoT team, we we already helped to rebuild that trust into public places, into into buildings. So, yes, I'm very optimistic about Expo uh, 2020. I can tell you we are hosting delegations uh, every day, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm just enjoying that, to be honest. <laughs> I, I'm so happy for, for you and your team. I can't imagine the relief it must be to finally get to this stage and really start to have the fun part, which is not the preparation and not the planning, but the doing. So so I'm, I'm really happy and excited to see the excitement on your face um, from representing you and your team. And thank you so much for your time. I, I also understand it's a really busy time of year for you. So we thank you so much for, for joining us and thank you so much for the insights in into Expo and also you know, some of the things that you've been able to try, test uh, and really create as part of the process to, to make Expo 2020 possible.
Thank you very much, John, for having me again. It's an absolute pleasure. And, and thank you, everyone out there who's also listening or watching this episode. Remember to like, comment, or subscribe to us wherever you are, you are listening or watching us. Uh, and ensure also to keep your ears out because I hope that we'll have many more conversations uh, from together with Oliver, but also his team around Expo 2020 and some of the amazing things that uh, that are really demonstrated and proven as, as benefits for the community moving forward for D Dubai 2020 after the event phase. So thank you all and we'll see you very soon.